Hi, welcome to Dr. Pat TV, and we're looking at uh, part two of our slope idea for derivatives, just kind of an introduction to this idea. And so uh, we're, we're looking at different rates, and so one of the rates that we're now looking at is the instantaneous rate. That would be the slope of the tangent line. And uh, instead of doing a graph, this time we're using a formula. So what we want to do is uh, do some number crunching to see if we can get a good estimate, to look for some patterns to see what our slope of the tangent line would be at x equals 5. Okay, so uh, basically what we're going to be doing is we want to plug in some small changes and then we're going to look for a pattern. So I'm going to use x equals 5 and a second data point. And here's my set of data points. I'm going to calculate a slope using x equals 5 and x equals 5.1. I'm going to get a slope value for that. You know, you plug the number into the formula uh, and then you do the 5, you do the 5.1 into the formula, you get some results, you take the difference of those results results that's in the numerator and then divide by the change in x values and so I'm going to do that three different times I'm going to take that x value I'm going to plug it into the formula take this x value plug it into the formula get results take the differences and calculate my slope when I do that for these uh, three pairs of numbers as you can see from the three pairs of numbers, what I'm doing is the second, the first data point x value is always 5. The second one is getting a number that's closer to 5. So I'm going from 5.1 to 5.01, 5.001, that's getting closer to 5. So what happens to my slope as I use x values that get closer and closer to 5? So when I got my slope between 5 and 5.1, I got 20.2. When I calculated my slope between 5 and 501, I got 20.02. And then when I did 5 and 5001, I got 2002. And so I'm looking at this, I'm stepping back, and I'm going, hey, is there a pattern here? And hopefully you can see the pattern. As we get smaller, as we get closer to 5, as I go 0 0.1, 0 0.01, 0 0.001, as we go in that direction, then I get 20.2, 20.02, 20.002. And so what could you say about that pattern? Is I'm thinking I'm getting closer and closer to 20. Um, and so that's what I'm going to guess. I'm going to say that the pattern here is if I keep on getting uh, an X value using 5.0001, I'm going to get a res result for my slope that's closer to 20. So if I wanted to say, what would I think it's going to be exactly at 5? I would say that uh, my slope would be 20. So that's kind of using uh, the numbers. You're doing some number crunching. You're looking at values of slopes, and you're trying to see, is there a pattern as I use x values that are closer and closer to that 5 in this example? Okay, so now we're looking at the generic uh, rate of change formula. So we've got f of x plus h minus f of x over h. And so this is that function notation. Basically, it's slope. It's the rate of change. It's the change of output over change of input. It's the change in y's over the change of x's. Uh, you know, all your different variations of slope, delta y, delta x, those kind of things. All right. Um, this formula actually works really well for us for both average and instantaneous rates of change. So when I'm looking at average rate of change, the key thing for average is if you're kind of thinking it graphically, you're looking at two distinct points. Okay, so you can see clearly two points on the graph and you connect them with a line. And so that means h is the interval. That's the distance between the two x's. That's what h is, the distance between the two x's horizontally. Um, it's big enough that you can see that on the graph. So h has got to be significant enough. Okay, that's when we're talking about average rate of change. H is big enough. Now, one of the things that you've got here is that uh, you can do the other variation of uh, slope, and that would be your x1, x2 kind of thing. Uh, that's because your x plus h is like your second point. Your x value is your first point, x plus h is your second point. And so we've seen that in previous examples of our um, y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1. So I'm just kind of trying to show you that in average rate of change, we're looking at the slope of secants. We're looking at uh, a slope on two distinct points on the graph. 
H is different between the two X values, you get a, you get a very significant difference that you can actually know that we're really talking about X1 and X2. Okay, so that's what we're dealing with secant points and average rates of change. The main difference between that and instantaneous is like the Spice Girls. And what I mean by that one song, the Spice Girls, where two hearts become one, that's the idea that we're looking for instantaneous rates of change. We're looking for the slope at one particular values, and what we do is we play the game of, I'm playing with secants, I'm playing with two distinct points, and then as these points become together, we get one slope, we get one heart between the two lovers. Okay, so that's what we're talking about. The key point here also is the H value gets very, very small small because the distance between the two x values gets they're closer together closer together the h value gets smaller and so you're going to get to a point where h uh, x plus h is basically going to be just like the first point h gets real small goes to zero and we're playing with this oh this is kind of different it, it it's like a secant but it's not because that second point now is so close to the first point it's like it is the first point but hopefully you can see a problem mathematically and we're going to have to work to get around it because if we do get a tangent line and the two points come so close together we're basically going to get zero down here because that second point is going to be like the first point and hopefully you realized that's zero in the denominator and that creates a lot of problems that's hard to deal with and so Whenever we have problems like this, whenever we have zeros in the denominators or other, some other problems mathematically, what we do is we do a little finagling. I've got to be honest with you, we're going to finagle something. And what we finagle is we use limits. This idea that we're going to say, you know, we know that we can't divide by zero. So what we want to do is see what happens when we get close when we get two data points that are very close together, like that 5 and 5.1, 5 and 5.001, what we want to do is we want to kind of get an ideal algebraically as we get closer and closer together with our x values, as our interval gets so close it goes to zero, what happens to our slope? How can we calculate that out? So what we're going to be doing in the next sections, next uh, few days, is we're going to be looking at that and figure out how can we play with that? Is there a way that we can actually get answers when we're technically dividing by zero? And so when we do that, when we get uh, tangent lines, when this interval goes to zero, and that's what this limit h goes to zero means, when our tangent line, or when our two points become a tangent line, then basically we've got a new symbol over here, that little apostrophe over there, this f prime x is how it's uh, uh, stated. That's going to indicate for us our new term derivative, which is just a nice fancy way for saying slope of the tangent. And so that's basically what we're looking at. We got new notation in this section, instantaneous rate of change formula. This is the formula. It's a slope. Our, our X values, our two data points are getting so close together that the distance between them is going to zero. And then when we do that, when we calculate the slope of the tangent, we're going to call it a derivative and we're going to indicate it with the notation of f prime x. Hey, that's the introduction for this idea of derivatives. Thanks and have a good day.